on him. Yes. Amen. Amen. I thank God for what he's allowed us to do. And thank God for moderator Rodney Leggett of Faith Fellowship, Missionary Baptist Church of Rodale. He came and spoke to a theme. It's preaching time. I stand this morning to take the baton from him and to continue running with it. And I want to give you a thought of things. I, I am still preaching. I want to take the baton from the moderator who said it's preaching time. And I want to tell you this morning, I am still preaching. I'll catch you later. I said I'm going to take the baton and I'm going to go a little further because I am still preaching. The nobility of preaching is not established by such great men of God as Martin, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. nor Sr. Not even by my beloved late pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. O. Hockenbaum or your late pastor, the Reverend Dr. Robert L. Chu, or even your present pastor, the Reverend Dr. Anthony Andre Kenneth Hodge Sr. The nobility of preaching was not formulated by our actions, it was left for our direction. You, you, you would understand that if you understood in Mark in the first chapter, the 14th verse, where preaching really found its place. You would find the greatest preacher that ever lived right there in Mark 1 and 14. For it says, now, after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. I know we have become discouraged and we have become dismantled and we even have learned how to diss the preacher. But I stand to tell you that there is a great preacher who has all power and he has preaching power. And that's the reason I stand to tell you I am still preaching. See, you think I'm talking about me, but you missed it when I say I am. I've called in some help. Somebody need to understand that I have a support system when I invoke the I am. I, you do know I am, don't you? He's the one that met Moses on the backside of the mountain. Moses began to tell him, I can't go see Pharaoh. I killed a man in Pharaoh's army. And if I go back, they're going to get me. He said, the people won't receive me. I stutter. He said, what am I to tell them? He said, tell them that I am that I am. When I tell you I am still preaching, I'm not taking the provincial or the providential way out to talk about myself. I'm talking about the great I am. He told me to tell you this morning, I am still preaching. You'll catch me in a minute. President Kennedy, one of the most beloved presidents, he had a word that he gave to the United States of America. At one point, it was a famous address and he said, ask not what your country can do for you. He said, but you need to ask the question, what can you do for your country? Let me hypothesize that for you if you would. Let us not ask uh, the Lord what he can do for us, but let us ask the question, Lord, what are we willing to allow you to do through us? I wish you heard me. Too many of us have a whole laundry list of questions and responses we want back from God, but God has has a requirement for you today. Somebody should be willing to say, Lord, what are you willing to do through me instead of for me? I'm trying to help two folks up in here to change your prayer life. Instead of all of these, give me and can I have, Lord? Somebody should say, use me, Lord. Somebody's prayer should be, Lord, give me the direction, the focus of how you want to use my life today. What is it about me, Lord, that stands out in heaven that will stand up on earth? gonna be here a long time looking at me funny like that because I got a lot of sermon and you got a little bit of time. I'm trying to come through the woods on you with this. Uh, uh, what are we able to do for our 
ourselves, not much, but God, if we would allow him, can do a lot through us for other folk. Let us get our fleshy man way out of God's way so that God can have spiritual providence in our lives today. Somebody should be willing to allow God to use you today. God wants to have some willing vessels. I remember back a while ago, Mother Pop, they had a ministry at the church called Willing Workers. I think they left. <laughs> there, there was a ministry and their whole job was to go around to find out what needs to be done yes. if there was some sweeping willing workers would show up to sweep oh, I, I, I don't, don't get mad because we have a few willing workers at Zion Hill the problem is that we're going to wear out those who are willing oh my amen when I, when, I, when I look at this this, uh, this text, I'm going to get back to the text so we can get out of here. Let, let, let us realize that God is still speaking to us through his text today. Right. This allowing the acceptable proclamation of God's word to become fully manifest within us. This is not what we are able to do ourselves, but what God has anointed and appointed us to do for him. When you find at the church, you only do the things you're comfortable doing, you're not doing what God would have you to do. Somebody, when I ask you, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, you will never learn, baby, if you just sit around. You have to sometimes put yourself in a position to learn. I wish somebody said amen up in here. You have to come to church willing to get uncomfortable while you're at church. If when you go to work, you go to work to get paid for things you don't do on... I don't sit at home and make decisions about New Horizons. I go to New Horizons and get paid. I'm not sitting at home doing the same thing, but I'm sitting at home doing something. Somebody need to understand that when you come to church, you come for a payday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come, come here, come here, come here, come a little closer to me. Now, don't run right now. You come for a payday, which means you need to work. Oh, Two folks that got mad at me over there, I'm going to look over here. Uh, you, you come to church to work. Why do you think the first three word letters in work and worship are W-O-R? God did not make a mistake. You come to church to work. There is some work that you should be doing or the Bible is wrong. For he said his servants. His servants, which means you should have a responsibility when you get here. Yes. Amen. Amen, two people. Amen. If you only come here for worship, you need to come back to work. Oh, they're going to be mad, but, but, but my job, my job is to keep preaching. Verse 19 says, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The, the Greek lexicon says, the word preach means to proclaim, to publish, to drive home a point of divine truth. Acceptable means the time which is only given and assured by God. So it means that I am to drive home a point for God that would only reach you in the time God has appointed. You'll get this later. Some of y'all, it's not your time. You still on milk, and this is a meat sermon. Some of you got to be careful that you don't choke. Amen. Never before has there been a more acceptable time for the proclaiming of the gospel of Jesus Christ than now. To show the world the power of God, to revolutionize people, to put liberty back in the soul of man, to set free from all oppressions and sins of this world. For never has, has the world seen a more wicked time than right here and now today. Never before has sin been more oppressing, has sin been more prevalent, has sin been more readily accepted in America than it is right now. Never before or has sin been on the doorstep in the bedroom, in the living room, as many houses as it is today. You're not going to like me, but, but, it's, but I'm still preaching. You, you, you 
can sit there and be quiet, but I'm still preaching. Uh, uh, I know I'm right. We have abortionists running around killing unborn babies. We have homosexuality, lesbianism, even accepted in the churches. I read an article from the Cincinnati Enquirer, and it talked about this man that wrote a letter talking about how the church had began to adapt and adopt homosexuality as a practice at the church instead of standing up saying that it was a sin against God. Now don't get, don't go out here telling lies on me. I didn't say homosexuals. I said homosexuality. I'm talking about the act and not the person. God still loves the homosexual, but God still hates homosexuality. I know I'm right about it. You don't have to amen that because I'm still preaching. I want you to know that this guy wrote the article to the paper. They posted it. They got a return response the next week and it began to say that the church had become homophobic and it was full of homophobes and, and that God was embracing homosexuality in the New Age church and wow. it even had the audacity to say that, that God would celebrate homosexuality David's love for Jonathan Ruth's unusual uh, loyalty to Naomi Jesus' obvious special relationship with John, the disciple who Jesus loved, let us not discount the worth of Jesus Paul, Mary and Martha because they did not marry or have children. They went on with all this filth, put it in the paper, and when they ran, read it out to find out, it was a preacher who had sent it, which lets me know that the pulpit is not exempt from problems. When the preachers start trying to create a pathway for sin to live in the church, then they don't understand that it's the eye in sin that makes sin so enjoyable. But I'm glad that there's a son that erases sin. I'm not talking about the S-U-N, I'm talking about the capital S-O-N. I'm glad that I'm able to proclaim that there's a truth that God is still at war, has an adversary called Satan, and he is still allowing him to have realm and have his relegation and have his delegations in this world. But there's a day coming, there's a day coming soon and very soon when sin will not only be put away, but it won't be our problem more. The sins of the world are being accepted as a way of life. We call it alternate lifestyles and we have modified sin, but the Bible said that all have sinned, but it didn't say we should continue in sin. I'm glad that I have a way, and I know it doesn't say it, because Romans 6 said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? It goes on, verse 2 said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? What they're saying is that we have no freedom to continue sinning. Grace is not a card for you to be able to sin and apply grace to it. Grace soothes my case. And no, you can't out sin grace, but you can serve hell for for your continuing sinning. Sinners do not practice sainthood and sainthood is not practiced by sinners and sinners should understand that God has given us a pathway out of sin. Yeah. Therefore, we should understand that we don't have to continue in the path that we are going. That God has laid himself to be a path onto us that we may exit from sin. The chain, the bondage of the devil and all his deception is severed by the blood of Jesus Christ becoming applied to a man's soul. Therefore, let us not accept sin into the midst, but proclaim the gospel of deliverance. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Of Jesus Christ. Eternal life, righteousness, and holiness must be the attributes of the church today. We have to quit running away, not wanting to be a holy church. We just want to be a whole church. We just want a lot of folk in church, but we don't want no holiness at the church. I'm glad that God told us that the just shall live by faith, that our faith is is that one day we will live in a society where sin will no longer be prevalent. But as long as it is, we must resist sin. We must fight against sin. We must 
suffer to sin not. The Bible gives me permission. It says, be angry, but sin not. We have an enemy that's our mortal and our spiritual enemy called the devil. And his job is to tempt us into sin. Your job is to serve God and sacrifice sin. Let us sound the trumpet for all to hear in the year of Jubilee, proclaiming, preaching, publishing the redemption to all men, the liberation of souls of men, freedom and grace from all suffering.